everywhere. There were thousands of phones on desks, and uh, that that was really our main way of actually uh, communicating back and forth to one another. But but the word collaboration was definitely the one that was that was being used quite strongly at the time. And it was only later on that unified comms became an actual phrase. But what was very interesting, and if you cast your mind back, that there was a there was a push upwards from the traditional video conferencing companies and a push downwards from the traditional IT vendors. So we, we had this this play in place, if you remember it, and we had the VC people saying, yeah, 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 I can we can have, you know, look at our kit, it's wonderful, and you can have these fantastic video conferencing. Um, but I couldn't send you a file at the same time. We'd have to log off and then I'd have to go to my PC and um, you know, we'd have to email something across um, and then th that's really how it would go from there. So it was, it was in some respects, it was always a little bit of a race between whether these two would collaborate together, would they, would, would they meet, could they find technology, would they find it at the same time? And I can remember having these conversations with a number of the, the very large video conferencing providers at, at the time. Um, so as things moved along, it was all quite interesting. It, I, I think the, the big thing was when, when the web came along, and that, that's really what changed things uh, when we had uh, the World Wide Web. And that, that kind of enabled us to actually access information in a slightly different way. And, of course, at the same time, the telco providers saw huge markets in terms of connectivity. And if you remember those old fax machines, those old modems and how they used to scream when we used to we used to turn them on, and it used to take a, a, an age. And the the way that unified comms has actually driven is, is really through us, the users, and we'll come back to the users a little bit later in the presentation, but it's, it, it's us as users that are actually driving this and driving the need for security as, as, as well. So um, how did things evolve? Well, obviously, then we had our mobile phones and we could we could speak and text and, you know, think things were going quite well until eventually, you know, we have information today. And if you talk to somebody who's sort of 20 or younger, they wouldn't remember any of this, so they would only think of their phones now as to what it does now, uh, and the fact that we can do absolutely everything on our phone. You know, everything. You, you know, we can watch TV, we can download, we can send a file, we can do everything all at the same time, and it's very much taken for granted. And um, it was interesting. I was talking to a client on Monday, and we both said the same thing and we were talking in the afternoon and I said, oh, apologies for being a bit slow. I've just come off one call. He said, yes, the same. And we worked out between us. We'd use six different versions of unified communication between us during the day. And uh, that that's really the way things are going. And then really what's going to happen in, in the future? Well, if you talk to a lot of analysts and you see what's happening, it, it's going to be AI. And how is AI going to affect things in terms of unified comms? Do we want something that's going to be quite dynamic? Now, you could argue the fact that we can multitask within our phones. That's very dynamic, and we should be satisfied with that. But actually, again, it's coming from users, what users want, and they want things to be a little bit more intuitive. They want automatic applications, and they want things to be a little bit more seamless. Uh, and again, it's all driven down by speed. So if we move on and then talk a little bit about how um, you know, uh, unified comms is, is today. I mean, typically, uh, you're going to be looking at a number of different things. We, we want everything on the same device as well. That's the other thing which is which is pretty key. We want voice. We want data. We want email. We want to collaborate with other different people very easily. Uh, we want physical presence. We also want, want mobility. And we also uh, want, make, want to make sure that we've got a really strong a uh, really strong backbone bone as well. And another area which really helped us quite considerably was obviously VoIP. And there's so many, there, there are now so many providers and so many platforms. This actually gives us a bit of an issue when it comes to um, securing it. Because if you just look at this slide, for instance, you know, we've got several different devices and several different things that we're doing at the same time. How do you make sure that that's abs absolutely 100% secure? And again, going back to the, the, the comment that we made just earlier about the fact that myself and, uh, and, and a distributor that we were talking to, the fact that we've both been using so many different systems, how do you actually make sure that what we've said, what we transferred to one another is actually being secure? So it's actually presenting a bit of a problem. So the one, one thing that people do want to make sure, they, they're they very, very keen and very focused on the communication and the speed of the communication and the ability to transfer data in motion while we're actually doing this. And that's that's actually the key at the moment. And because of that, uh, because we're sending so much information back and forth uh, to one another, 
we're still getting hacked. That's that. That's the situation. Data is still going amiss, and we're still not managing to secure the data while it's actually in in, in motion. Now, the fact is, what this has also done is it has also actually highlighted a number of areas where there are actually some, particularly within legacy systems, where there are some gaps. Um, but it's 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 driving some some innovation, it's driving further flexibility. But, but the overall aim really of what's driving unified commerce today is to make sure that providers can make sure that data is going seamlessly from one place to another or to several uh, people at the same time, enabling us to chat, to transfer, we can collaborate on documents uh, and make sure that we've also got the visual element as well. So again, it's the, it, it's the power of information sharing. And, and again, Artificial intelligence is, is most certainly driving this. And, uh, and again, we're, we as users are saying, actually, we want something that's going to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more flexible and a lot more intuitive. So how can AI help us with this and what's what's going to be driving it? And is this going to help in terms of speed and make, make sure that we actually get something that's going to be a lot faster? But also, um, let's not ignore the fact that social media has a lot to do with this as well, because... Uh, things are now becoming linked, whereas we had separate systems before in terms of digital transformation. It's a, it's a phrase which has been used around for quite quite some time. But I was at a meeting uh, not so long ago, and I have to say I probably heard it uh, mentioned at least 15 times during one hour because people are looking to, to, to basically transform their business. And again, the way to do this and when products are finished, but also during the transition is, is through digital transformation. Now, the whole industry seems to be moving towards that, uh, that, that particular area. And again, there's a huge, huge need for collaboration. Uh, we all want to collaborate. We want to, we don't want to have, to have to use different systems. Now, if you were to be talking to somebody perhaps in, in say the defense area, they would say, well, actually we have to log into half a dozen different systems and that's the way it's gonna be for a while. Um, but if you talk to somebody in a different area, perhaps say in retail, They'd be happy to have one system and customers and internal people alike can actually just access one system. Now, we'll talk about the, the, um, the workforce in a, in a little bit more detail in, in a minute, but we're all pretty much mobile. Um, I'm here in the UK, Shemex uh, in, in, in Poland, and we've got colleagues in the US as well. So we all work together and, and there's very much driven towards the mobile workforce. And that's obviously been driven out of COVID very much so, but also out of market pressures as well, because there's been various different changes. Um, and, and here in Europe, we've obviously had situations where um, we've had Brexit, we've had COVID at the same time. Um, so people are actually using different suppliers, they're, they're using different methods of uh, delivery. So again, it's also pushed the need for unified communications and, and, and in terms of collaboration, absolutely, um, absolutely key. Um, and then we come to, to threat protection, pre prevention, which I think is, is another really interesting area. One of the things we're, we're users are actually trying to stop is making sure that we can actually get these threats before they even start. Now, we did a, a seminar not so long ago where we talked about everything starting with encryption, and that's absolutely key because you can't necessarily undo all of your security layers that you put in place. That would probably be a bit crazy because you would be opening the doors to, um, to, to being hacked. So what we need to do is we need to actually be a little bit more intelligent in terms of how we actually stop these threats um, from the very beginning. And then there's uh, also the you know, commercial collaboration in terms of how we're actually working as, as businesses and how different systems are, are trying to now have the same platform. In instead of having 18 different uh, ways of communicating, let's try and bring that down to one or two. And we all use the same ones and we all, we all work to the same protocols. And then, and then really finally, defence. And um, obviously the recent conflicts that we've had has highlighted the need for confidential information to go back and forth pretty live and to make sure that that actually saves lives. So again, another reason why um, unified communications is actually being uh, being driven so hard and why we're seeing a lot more of it. But the challenge really is how are we going to actually make sure that we secure it and it's, it's okay in the future. So if we move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about how you know, we as, we as encryption will, will actually help. Well, firstly, let's let's also look at COVID. Now, we know that COVID is, 
that has been here and it's still it's still present but it's it had a huge effect that almost immediately we all had to work from home we were all isolated we're all hybrid workers and and today that's continued and is likely to continue um i was talking to somebody recently in 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 the health area in uh, in local government and they said well if it suddenly comes back or well, there's another strain then we're going to be back to where we were a couple of years ago and people having to be re-inoculated and so things are, things go back to square one so don't be surprised if we have to sort of go back to this situation so again and we also look at situations with schools as well um, children still need to be educated but how do you secure things across um, across the network because there's so many students and their coursework is, is confidential and their identities are confidential because the children and need to be protected so again that's another area that we need to be, be uh, mindful of and also access to multiple systems it, there are some situations where we have to log into a particular crm or something or a support mod uh, portal that means that we can only do it one particular way so again we have to make sure that we can actually still communicate and still transfer files also, if you're perhaps in, in the area uh, of um, business continuity, for instance, then you need to make sure you're doing some mapping or you're creating a document. That's got to be absolutely precise. And it may need three or four people at the same time. And as we said at the beginning, looking at how things have evolved, bring a device. Uh, that's that, that, that's huge. You know, we could be on a train, we could be somewhere else and we need to make sure that documents are being sent across. We might need we might have an eight o'clock meeting, but we're on a train going somewhere else and we've got to actually get into that meeting. So, again, that's that's absolutely driven. And again, just, just coming back to the to the key thing here, really, which is making sure that data is actually um, being transferred across and also making sure that the right person gets access to the right data and, and also the right people are being uh, brought into the right conversation as well in terms of collaborating too. So if we move on to the next uh, slide, please, we'll talk um, a little bit more about, um, so what's actually at risk? So in terms of our data, this is, this is where things become a little bit more interesting because the way that we're actually moving data uh, has has certainly changed, particularly during you know, and during any conversation. So, most people, as, as I said, you could find yourself at an airport. Uh, I'm going to be on a plane for eight hours, but I've got to make sure this document goes across. Um, so that that's got to happen. And as I said, we we're now under pressure to access documents from wherever we might be, and keeping these safe and secure is gonna be absolutely key. If we don't encrypt them, and if we don't protect them from the very beginning, how are we gonna make sure that the information has got across properly? And you know, have you got time to have three, three different layers of authentication, or do you need to send something fairly quickly? And again, it also means that all your unstructured data, again, data is growing. Um, I think two years ago, three years ago, it was around about 30 percent a year. It's predicted to grow 34 percent this year. So if you consider that, what's actually happening is that our data is now growing from a regulatory point of view and how much we need to store. But also we're collecting and keeping a lot more data. Uh, and you know, We see that a lot from from social media and obviously social media is used both from a social point of view and also from a business point of view as well. And so there's a lot more information that's now being kept, but is it being structured? And is that is that a possibility that um, there's, there's a leak? And also um, then when it comes to the fact that traditional methods, um, you know, if, if you were to consider using just an antivirus that you bought 20 years ago to protect your business, it's, it's not gonna work. Um, so clearly um, what we need to look at is is how some of the traditional and, and current methods need to have an, an extra layer added to them to make sure they can actually do the job that they're supposed to do. And, and these days, if you've got multiple appliances where uh, things are having uh, uh, multiple applications to protect your business, then sometimes that's not always gonna be enough. But, um, but yeah, if we go on to the next slide, this, what I wanted to try and illustrate here is the fact that perimeter protection just just isn't really going to be enough anymore um we used to think it was going to be enough to to you know in terms of a firewall but it, if you consider the fact that you can have somebody sitting outside your office and uh, they can access your kettle or your light bulb they've got your ip address and in they go you know they've got in through the back door so that's that's actually something which happens quite 
quite often. So, so what's the answer? Well, we, we certainly believe that the answer is definitely encryption. Um, and if we move on to the, um, to the next slide, please, we'll talk a little bit about why really in, in, encryption is, is so important. And uh, for those of you that might remember, encryption has actually been with us for, for some time. And it originally started during the Second World War and the Allies used Navajo as um, a language to transfer data and information back and forth and messages uh, because it was pretty much indecipherable. Um, and of course, uh, Germany then built the Enigma machine. And uh, for those of you that uh, saw the Russell Crowe film, we'll realize it took us a long time to actually crack that uh, and to actually try and get our hands on one of them. And it was really born out of that. And we then had the Yalta conference. And after that, there was a lot of dis distrust generally amongst uh, the allies and we couldn't work out who were our friends and who were our enemies still, but we thought, okay, so we need to encrypt everything. So encryption was actually born then and, and seen as a very valuable um, way of actually making sure that information and data goes goes back and forth and it, it's still with us today. And in fact, um, it's probably more important today than, it's, than it has been for, for some time. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about why encryption is becoming um, a bit more important. Um, wh why would you want to consider it? Well, first of all, uh, we want to make sure that we keep the content where it should be. I want to make sure that any information that I send to somebody is going to be 100% secure and it's going to the person that needs to see it, not the person that's maybe hacked or, or sitting outside the office trying to hack into the network. So that, that's, that's absolutely key. And 100% security and 100% collaboration has got to be the absolute key key and the goal here really and again it's all about really what creates the best user experience um is that the best thing for us uh, in which case then great we've actually achieved, achieved our goal and also it's really important to, to to make sure that we're creating um information barriers so to make sure that the, that the right uh, recipients get the right information be it a text be it information be it files be it images but whatever it might be and make sure that that person does get it and it's done in a timely manner as well and then if we look at the, the fact that what we want to stop is these accidental leaks and having a single point of contact where things, you know, or, sorry, single point of failure, which we'll mention in a moment, it, making sure that that doesn't happen. But it's very easy when you're using multiple different devices and multiple different unified communication systems and platforms. I could very easily send the wrong file that isn't protected, isn't encrypted to, to someone and somebody hacked it and saw it. And I, it's it's been my mistake because I'm I'm the user. Whereas if I was to encrypt it from the very beginning, then it's 100% secure and it's going to be 100% safe. And what that also me leads to is it makes sure that we are compliant because when we come to GDPR, we come to compliance, and, and all there are, let's face it, the auditors now have got teeth, and they are digging very deeply into our organisations because of all because of all the hacks and all the breaches. And I think there was the run up to Christmas. It seemed to be every day uh, somebody was getting hacked and there was something in the news about a very large company uh, being hacked and, and losing data uh, left, right and centre. And, and that still happens every day. And of course, that affects compliance and that can mean a huge fine um, through no fault of the company's fault at all. It's just the fact that they've been uh, they've been hacked and they're not compliant any longer. And again, coming back to the user experience, what we want to make sure that we can do is make sure that business runs as usual. I want to be able to transfer files, talk to someone, text and do everything that we need to do in order to run our business. Um, and in, that's really where encryption helps. We can make sure we can do that. And just, just to give you an example, one of the clients that we're talking to at the moment um, is very heavily in finance. And to make sure that they can get the data across uh, if they're doing a credit agreement, there's this confidential information coming backwards and forwards from clients. And so they need to send them approvals back. So it's a highly regulated industry. So what they want to be able to do is make sure that a, they can cut down uh, the time that it takes, because sometimes and uh, many of you may have even fallen foul of this. If you were applying for a mortgage two weeks ago, the rate might have been different than it is today and vice versa, because it changed quite quickly. So there's the need for speed. So the business as usual has to uh, has to come in there. And then again, as, as mentioned earlier, the, avoiding a single point of failure, that's that's absolutely key. And I know it, it's a headache for all IT managers to try and avoid that, because um, very often it can be the case. It could be human error or there could be one point on the network. Um, and that's where these people manage to get in and actually 
uh, hack part of our uh, part of our network. Um, and again, uh, just a just a final point. I think where encryption is really strong, and this is this is perhaps not thought of uh, as being terribly important, but actually by making sure that we're making we're giving the right information to the right people the documents are safe and secure we're actually helping to enforce the policies and the permissions which i know um a lot of it managers have a lot of difficulty enforcing and sometimes they have to use um, an iron rod to say right okay what i've really got to do is i've really got to make sure that um, you know you can't do this you can't do that but then of course you then have the problems that it's not you, you can't run your business as usual so how can we do this how can we make sure we maintain policies keep business as usual but also keep um uh keep people happy at the same time so really but by, by starting with encryption you, you are protecting your data from the very beginning and throughout its journey and throughout its life and that's what's absolutely key it really is so um, if we move on to the next slide, please. So just, just to kind of re reinforce this point, really, um, it's so important that we do protect our data and we protect it from threats, both on premise and in cloud. That, that's absolutely key. And we can do that with encryption. And you'll see in a moment um, just how CypherDog does that. We, we can do that from any device and it doesn't matter where it's going to. We, we can make sure that's absolutely collect, um, protected. And again, it can be quite a lot of expense and quite a lot of effort when it comes to compliance, because if you if you are having some holes in your compliance and you didn't tick that box in that particular area to make sure that data was sent properly in a particular way and that the rules were enforced, then yeah, you you, you could easily be fine. And I think this probably certainly appeals to a lot of the IT departments in terms of they're not having to be quite so concerned about certain parts of the security because it's being taken care of automatically. So I can remember when um, uh, single sign-on first came on, if those of you can also remember that, and that was, thought, oh, this is great. You know, we've now protected ourselves forever. Um, single sign-on, we, we use a key to, to log on, and everything's great and wonderful. Well, of course, things have moved on a little bit since then, and people have found ways around it, and we, we now have to use different methods in terms of log, logging on. So again, if your IT department is having to spend quite so much time enforcing policies, then it helps to make sure that it, it's run a lot smoother. And again, it comes back to what we said at the beginning, which is the user experience, making sure the user experience is good. And that's the whole benefit of, of unified communication. So it's definitely here to stay, but it, but securing unified comms is just absolutely key because that's where we're going to lose some of our data when it's in transit um, and when we're going from, from one place to another. So we go on to the next slide. I think we're probably coming to um, yeah the final one. So just really a little bit about us before I, I hand over to um, uh, to Shemek just to to uh, tell a little bit about the company. But yes, we were founded in, in, in 2018 and um, we are one of the fastest growing companies. And I would say we're probably the fastest growing encryption company in the world at the minute because we're growing so fast where people are coming on board. And the, uh, the, the, inf the in terms of the inquiries that we're getting are, are growing uh, pretty pretty fast and furiously i have to say which is keeping uh, uh, keeping us very busy which is wonderful but really what we want to do and, and you can see some of the awards at the bottom there really in terms of our uh, our key what we want to make sure is we want to we, we we have a goal in terms of wanting to ensure that everyone's data is protected and encrypted and make sure that people's communication is is kept 100 private and we want to do that by really protecting everyone from the from the very beginning at the access point and just ensure that really everyone gets total security and peace of mind and make sure that we're protecting things in, in, in the correct way. So um, and do it in real time. And uh, that, that's absolutely um, a key for us. Now, um, people who've recently become clients of ours have said, well, uh, one of the things that they felt was was very uh, was very beneficial for them was the fact that they felt a, a huge return on investment because you don't need to reinvent the wheel as far as your your own IT infrastructure is concerned. You can simply add encryption as, as an extra layer and it's so simple and easy to use and, and cost effective that it made complete sense and it kept their business running. So I'm going to finish here and I'm going to hand over to um, uh, to Shemek who's just going to go into a little bit more detail about how we actually um, do that. So thank you Shemek, I'll hand over to you now. Okay, thank you, Pete. Uh, my part is about CypherDoc. So I think that uh, 
uh, in the first slide, I have answers what CypherDoc guarantees. In a moment, I will show you CypherDoc in my encryption, how it works. So we can say that CypherDoc prevents economic espionage. It, and if we talk about economic espionage, this is not only steering of some technology or patents. The, the easiest way, uh, easiest method of stealing some data are offers or agreements. Uh, which uh, can be steal by hackers, for example, and used by competitors. Second point is preventing invoice hacking. This is a very popular attack, uh, especially if it's uh, dedicated for one company when hackers exactly know to whom go uh, and know the, their situation and uh, relation between CEOs and, and accounting office. Another thing uh, is ransomware, especially uh, ransomware of, uh, of new generation with double extortion, when the first point of attack is stealing data of company, of victim, and the second part of attack is encryption of uh, infrastructure, servers, uh, uh, laptops or, or desktops. Uh, CypherDoc prevents phishing and give us secure, confidential and encrypted communication because we should, we need such kind of communication because at this moment, governments, big companies or, or other uh, sites, parties would like to know a lot of things about us and we should protect our communication. And as you know, there is a lot of uh, regulations, uh, not only in European Union because of GDPR, because of uh, NIST2 and DORA. And if we see on whole world, there is a lot of regulation connected uh, and similar to GDPR, like in uh, countries in Asia and, and uh, in, in, in the US, for example. So the CypherDoc email encryption is answer to all regulations. But I, I would like to say one thing that CypherDoc email encryption is not only encryption of emails, because using CypherDoc email encryption, we can encrypt any text or any file and use any media for communication we want. One from those media is email, and I will show you how CypherDoc email encryption works in this moment. So you can see my... Uh, you don't see my, my one moment. Uh, I will switch screen sharing. This is not this one. This is this one. Okay. You can see my, my private Gmail mailbox and you can see here Poll of doc, and it means this is a cipher email encryption application. Uh, and uh, we can say that cipher doc email encryption has two parts. One part is application for uh, Windows, for Mac OS, or for Linux, and this is obligatory part of solution. And the second part, you can see this is a plugin to browser or for Outlook because we uh, plugin to two, and very soon we found that we're. Thunderbird uh, plugin, and if you if, if we install application, the first part is uh, registering uh, a user. Yes, and uh, during registration, application uh, is creating a pair of keys. One is public and one is private. In single user version, which I have on my computer, uh, private key is stored only on my device. It means on my on my computer. So, uh, so I should make backup of it, and I will in this moment uh, switch from from Polish to English. It will be easier to our audience, and I have the possibility to make backup of my private key on any file. It could be on pen drive, on external disk drive, on any any place I want. And using this uh, this small application, and I can decrypt files and text. But if I have um, uh, installed plugin, in this case, this is plugin for Chrome, so I can use some uh, some uh, one click protection. It means I can create email, for example, to my other uh, to my other mailbox, and I put here some test message and uh, what can i do i can um, select this text use right click and encrypt uh, this text and uh, 
you can see that this text is uh, encrypted and uh, this cipher text I can send to my mailbox and this mailbox is connected to my Thunderbird but for Thunderbird we still haven't uh, plugin but what can I do I can open my uh, my my Thunderbird but we, we should wait for email which is uh, which is going to me okay it's ready so this is email this is email which i received in a moment yes because you can see this 3 p.m uh 44 sec minutes so i can i haven't plugged in so i can select this text and use a magic window for decryption for example text and click decrypt and you can see this text is decrypted but uh, if somebody is using uh, is using uh, uh, Gmail, uh, encryption of content of email is very easy because I can click on a uh, once and I see that there is a test message. And this is for encryption of uh, of uh, email uh, messages. But as I mentioned before, we have uh, plugins to uh, to Outlook too because I think if we talk about uh, a business user is very important so it's very similar because i can click new message and what can i see i can put here receiver of my email it could be my account on cypherdoc and i can say use uh, some test and what can i do is the same select text click encrypt message and I should wait a little because if we see some, if we have some uh, streaming, it it, it take a time. After clicking this button, I have encrypted text. But if I received uh, in Outlook uh, encrypted text, I can decrypt uh, this text using uh, using uh, using one click. So you can see that I can. Uh, decrypt this text so uh, it, it looks uh, very similar to gmail but as i mentioned before uh, we can use cypherdoc for encryption different things and uh, using different media you can imagine that i would like to send uh, credentials for any service so it's very nice uh, tool because i can put for example user and after that password and uh, use some some uh, some different uh, uh, characters so if i have such kind of information i can click encrypt and in this time i receive information that uh, cipher text is in clipboard and what can i do i can use slack for example and i can use slack uh, and my channel uh, sorry so i can here use here slack and send credentials for example to to user for for whom i encrypt this message i can use magic window because we don't at this moment support uh, support uh, slack for with plugin so i can decrypt it using magic window and you can see it's very very secure way of communication and very easy but we we have in 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 plans to, to develop more plugins to have uh, automated communication with different media what about files because i talked about uh, messages or emails or texts so uh, I, I, we can encrypt and decrypt uh, files uh, here using uh, another window we have some ideas about new version which will be uh, in production version i hope in two weeks because we our developers team uh, worked on it uh, during last weeks uh, so in this new version uh, you will have address book here so you you have no uh, you, you don't must in this case uh, put direct emails to people for whom this file is uh, dedicated you can put here a, a lot of uh, addresses it, it could be more than one and uh, you can choose files using this window i have a lot of encrypted files because i made a lot of presentation for different people 
So I can choose, for example, some some photos, for, and I can choose location when uh, when an encrypted files uh, can be found. So I can choose this this uh, folder. Click OK, and after a few seconds, uh, this file is encrypted. What uh, what what can I see more? This file, encrypted file. I can uh, I can send using any media. You can imagine that I can send uh, send um, file using uh, WeTransfer, Google Drive, or, or another platform, Dropbox, Microsoft One. I can use uh, for sending uh, uh, encrypted uh, messages, uh, WhatsApp. I can use Telegram Signal. And uh, I can have guarantee that this is real encrypted using asymmetric encryption because only one person, a person who has access to private key, can decrypt this uh, uh, this message. Okay. Uh, Cypherdoc versions because we have uh, we can say that free, but frankly speaking, there are two versions of our software. I showed you. Uh, a single user version. It is. It, it means that this is version when one license means one user. It's similar to antivirus, and single version has all uh, all features we need. This version uh, allows users to encrypt and decrypt uh, text, uh, emails, attachments, and and what what you can imagine, and uh, you can you can. Uh, you can uh, store, make backup your uh, private uh, key on file, and uh, after 14 days, if if somebody is not uh, buying payable version, uh, this application will go in free mode, and in free mode, uh, uh, um, decryption is possible of all things you received, including files or text. So it's it's quite quite nice. And the second version of our application is business version. I think that it is big, big step um, forward for us uh, because we we prepared this version during last few months. And in this version, one license is for many users. So, for example, you can you can imagine the situation that company which have 100 uh, employees would like to have 300 users, for example, and we we can deliver one license for many users. And the main difference to other to, to single version single user version is that uh, private keys of users are stored in vault on local server. It means that we haven't any access, any copy of uh, private keys because uh, server with vault is separated to the internet and we are using proxy server, which we deliver for communication between uh, administration panel and uh, and rest of components of application. And in business version, we automize installation of uh, uh, users application on computers uh, uh, in company. What we can say about uh, supported uh, email uh, clients. First, we support Gmail and uh, Google Suite, yes, uh, using plugins for Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Mozilla Firefox. And this plugin for Firefox is totally new because launch was yesterday. We can use uh, Outlook. And it means uh, we can support Microsoft 365 and exchange server uh, on Outlook 116 and later. It, it uh, is connected with, with uh, um, architecture of add-ins because you can use add-ins from Microsoft only, uh, only in time when you have uh, servers, as I mentioned before. And this, uh, this, uh, this add-ins is for, um, for, for web client and native client. Uh, in, if you want to uh, use other um, client of, uh, of email, uh, you can use manual encryption and decryption or right click uh, because we plan in next version of, um, of CypherDoc email encryption to use uh, right click for encryption and decryption uh, files and text and it should be ready in, in two weeks time or we can use uh, magic window. And we are working on Mozilla Thunderbird uh, plugin, which allows to use Thunderbird. And I think that we can cover about 90% of business market. 
and other communication channels it's up to you uh, because we can use we transfer slack google drive dropbox uh, what we want uh, every media and we are sure that nobody can read uh, our messages uh, after encryption why cypher doc in few words uh, we are independent from email provider you can connect cypher doc with any uh, email server and uh, and work with any, any email client. Uh, CypherDoc is not only protection of internal emails. We can um, protect outgoing emails, emails because the most the main problem of uh, encryption in emails is that we don't know if I, we send emails outside of company. We don't know anything about uh, uh, recipient uh, server. Low entry level means that you can decrypt any file and, or any text uh, encrypted by CypherDoc using free version. Uh, we support Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Uh, it means if we talk about application you, I showed you. For Gmail and Google Suite, we have plugins. Uh, for Outlook, the same. And uh, for Thunderbird, we plan to have plugin very soon. And the most important thing that in our solution, there is no trusted third party, including email provider, solution provider, it means us, and third party certification authority. Because we are not using anything, um, only sender and recipient can have access to decrypted content. We are using unique and uh, unique uh, cryptographic methods. This is combination of asymmetric and symmetric encryption. We are using RSA 3072 bits and uh, AES uh, uh, 256. So it means this is popular and uh, good algorithm. Um, and what we can say that that uh, your private key is always uh, protected because it's encrypted, uh, involved in and on your local device. So uh, we support zero knowledge security model. It means that if user lose their their uh, private key, we don't help him uh, because we haven't uh, copy of um, private key, and we don't collect any any metadata. There is maximum anonymization because we know only we know only email address or and, and uh, we we store only public key of user, and we we know that. Uh, we sign every every public key uh, by um, by cert own certificate of user, and we always check if uh, correctness of uh, public keys of every user. So, if we talk about CypherDoc and our competitors or our other vendors of uh, solutions or technology, we can compare uh, CypherDoc to PGP or SMIME. It means that if we look on PGP, this is uh, open source standard, which which is uh, developed in many commercial solutions. So the the, the main important of uh, of our solution difference is that we sign public key, and it means that we know uh, user of application has have uh, know exactly that the his public key is really uh, is is the same as at the beginning. Uh, because in PGP, the main problem is that somebody who is interested network of users can change uh, uh, public key. And this is, this is a big problem if you send to, to this person, uh, to this account, uh, some encrypted data. It means that uh, that hacker can read it. And another thing is uh, if we look on SMIME that we are not using any, um, uh, any certification authority because SMIME is using, it means that there is third party. And what we can see, say that, that CypherDoc is easy to use and, uh, and uh, uh, in installation, especially single user version, and uh, especially if we talk about, uh, about uh, uh, administration and, and using, yes, uh, it's quite nice for, for understand how it works. So we can say that this tool is for everybody. Uh, and I would like to, to back to one point because this is very, very interesting that we can use uh, asymmetric and symmetric combination of algorithms and we can, for example, uh, encrypt one file to many users and uh, to be sure that only uh, people who I, uh, who I 
put in in the address list uh, are have uh, have rights to to decrypt it so it means that we are using very similar way like in pgp s mime to 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 encrypt uh, uh, unique symmetric key using uh, asymmetric encryption using public key of recipients and senders so it's a, it's a great solution because of that because we can connect the speed of symmetric encryption and, and security of asymmetric encryption what else very important is talk about business processes for cipher document encryption because we can say that there is a lot of uh, uh, sectors we should use uh, our solution for example lawyers, uh, accountants, healthcare, education, government, uh, defense, uh, and so on and so on. But if we, we talk about processes in company, it's interesting that, uh, that there is a, a lot of processes we should protect in every company, in every sector. For example, communication with external law firm, accounting firm, HR agency, uh, auditor, and, and so on and so on. And every company is sending uh, some offers, uh, is sending some uh, in, invoices, is sending some agreements to, to other companies. And if we see very important processes, for example, sending credentials to system application and services, or for example, we can cover using uh, using CypherDoc purchase process of qualified suppliers or sending some uh, some projects maps. Especially if we talk about uh, Nisto, we should protect such kind of data. What else? If you are interested in CypherDoc email encryption, you can you can send uh, uh, to me after today's meeting uh, email with. Uh, with your willingness that you would like to use to have free one year license of cipher document encryption and what else this is all so this is end of uh, of our presentation so thank you for for your time oh i see that there is a question uh, uh, question regarding cipher document encryption does two sides of communication should have cipher document encryption application Yes, yes, uh, you, you should have uh, both of side of communication should have uh, cipher doc email encryption. It means uh, they should have account and uh, every user uh, should have uh, should have public and private key because if you not have account application will not know for whom to encrypt. It means that there will be no public key. And the second second uh, second uh, question I see from from Gosia, uh, is it secure to encryptify and send it by WeTransfer? Yes, it is secure because we are, as I mentioned before, we are using a combination of asymmetric and symmetric encryption, and uh, only person who is uh, who who is owner of private key uh, can decrypt. Uh, uh, content or file for them so we can use any communication media for communication so it is a good solution for such such kind of uh, situation so i think that we are going to end of our uh, presentation so thank you everybody for 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 time uh, we will meet in, in two weeks because in two weeks there will be cyphercast in podcast organized by cypherdoc uh, uh, with one person uh, who is working in uh, cybersecurity tool, but uh, his work is connected, his job is connected with, uh, with uh, cybersecurity insurance. So I think it will be interesting, but this event will be in Polish language. So thank you for, for your time. Uh, we will see in two weeks. And uh, I can say that uh, recording of this, um, this webinar will be available on YouTube uh, till tomorrow's morning and I will send you all of us of you some some points after today's meeting so thank you bye